Hello, and thank you for coming. I really appreciate you being here. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, 10 good reasons to start a consulting business or possibly become a consultant. So stick around and we'll get right on it. All right. So about a week ago, I guess I um, I had a, a recording here that was a list of 10 things that were bad about consulting and why you might not want to do uh, consulting or have a consulting business. Today is going to be the other side of that. Uh, as many of you know, I love my job as a consultant. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about the good parts about consulting. Now, some of these are, are again subjective, right? Some of them are things that uh, I have experienced. So of course they, they might be jaded towards what I, I believe. Uh, there may be other ones where other folks, uh, based on some Twitter uh, announcements that I did, uh, gave me feedback. So I included those in the list as well, because for some people, these might be great things for them. So the first part or the first thing to that, that is considered a good thing is you get to wear many hats, right? In as a consultant, you tend to do some sales, you tend to do some advocacy. Uh, you know, in sales, maybe you're maybe you're thinking of things that your customers might need next, or maybe you see some some place where they're falling a little bit short, so you could make suggestions of items that they might want to implement. Another one is advocacy. You might really like certain frameworks, for instance, so and other things. So you might tend to recommend those more if they actually solve the needs of the customer. Uh, again, you may uh, sometimes be a developer. You might actually get your hands in the code. You might be designing some sort of proof of concept for a customer to prove a point. Uh, and sometimes you might be acting as a project manager where you're dealing with developers on a given team and you have to help manage the project as, as it's going along. Uh, of course, as on that topic, uh, that brings us to our next item, which is there's always new problems, right? And some people consider this a negative, some people consider it a positive. I guess it depends on the way you look at it, but there's always new problems to solve. There's a lot of variety that comes along with that because there's always something new to do. There's always something new to, to keep you engaged and, and so forth. Uh, another key point about this though is it, it, I consider it one of the great things about consulting because it creates less burnout. If I am working on new projects and I always have new problems to solve, it, there's less chance for burnout. As, as I've been working as a consultant for many years, whereas in the past when I worked as a developer, I tend to, tended to burn out and had to move on to another company or go on to some new thing. Uh, but as a consultant, there's a lot less burnout because it's always something new. Now, along with that is our next item, which is you're always learning. There is always something new to learn, uh, always some new thing to tackle, always some new technology. And again, that's one of the reasons why I created Beachcast is to uh, hopefully as I'm learning these new things and as I'm tackling these new technologies, I share them on Beachcast so the viewers, you, are able to then see how I dealt with the problems and how I overcame the, the struggles. Another, another thing to go along with that is that I'm always helping people. Um, one of the things that I love about consulting is that I'm always helping people. It's not just about the code. It's not just about uh, always you know, uh, having to tell people what to do. A lot of times it's helping people. Uh, as a consultant, I consider myself a mentor. I'm dealing with many developers. I'm dealing with many officers of companies in some cases, uh, maybe dealing with business people who don't understand technology. So I'm mentoring them. I'm, I'm helping them on an ongoing basis. Uh, a lot of folks ask me, why, what is your, what is your number one thing that you really like about consulting? And my answer is typically always, I get to help people. Um, I get to advocate certain technologies that I've found that have scratched my itch and I'm able to help other people implement those as, as the case may be. Now, as part of this though, 
That brings us to number six is which you're always a fixer, right? Uh, as I'm dealing with uh, as I'm dealing with technologies, as I'm doing things, I'm typically always fixing something. Uh, now, the reason that I put this as a positive is because it really is a self-respect booster. It's really something that drives you on an ongoing basis, not just helping people, but the fact that you're always always fixing things versus breaking things really plays a major key, uh, a major role in, in how I approach things. Uh, so it kind of goes hand in hand with the with the Boy Scout role, right? Where with the Boy Scout role, if you're camping out, you always leave the campground cleaner than you than you found it when you leave. And that's much the same thing with consulting. Hopefully, as a consultant, you should always strive to leave things better than when you got there. So as you're dealing with companies, as you're dealing with their code, as you're teaching them, as you're mentoring, you're always leaving things better uh, than you found them. Now, this can also lead to our number five thing, which is you're always considered the expert. And I, I, I really consider this a good thing because oftentimes developers are considered a resource, right? And we all, we all hate to hear that. You know, how many resources does it take to get the project done? Um, I hate being referred to as a resource. And as a developer, typically business people refer to us as resources. But as a consultant, I'm not considered a resource. I'm considered to be an expert. I'm considered to be somebody who is there to help out. Uh, everyone wants your advice as a consultant. That's why they hired you. Uh, so so it, does, uh, it does help a little bit to not be considered a resource. And typically folks don't re refer to a consultant as a resource. They consider them an expert or, or a consultant, whichever the case may be. But, but that being said, so I consider that another positive uh, in in the in the tool chain for for being a consultant, and of course this leads to our number four one, which is fame. Let's face it, everybody likes to be everybody likes to be known. Everybody likes to be considered as part of the thing. Everybody likes a little bit of fame, and as a consultant, there's a fair amount of that. Right now, you can be humble as you want to. I'm a very humble person by nature. But that being said, there's always uh, there's always a little voice in the back of my head that, that just feels good when when people uh, when you get to know people, when you get to, to know people. Sometimes fame is not necessarily a, about not being humble. Sometimes fame is just about knowing more people. I know a lot of people. I speak at conferences quite regularly. I'm, I'm consulting with many Fortune 100 companies, and I know some huge development teams through that process. So fame sometimes is just about people knowing your name. Sometimes it's just about people uh, un, you know, relying on you and expecting you to be part of the team. I've often said with many companies, I'm their on-call architect, right? Uh, so, so whenever they get into a jam or whenever they need some advice, they, they call me in and Adam, how would you tackle this? How would you do this? Now, along with uh, them calling me though, I'm always selling, always selling. And I like this part. Um, before I was a consultant, before I was even a developer, I was a salesperson in my, in my previous careers. And as a salesperson, I really liked the excitement of it, and, but not the excitement of selling. Don't think of it as a used car salesman sort of thing. It's not that kind of selling. In consulting, you're often recommending. And through those recommendations, it's kind of like selling, right? You, uh, uh, as a consultant, you want to pay attention to what your customers are saying. You want to pay attention to the problems that they're facing and then make recommendations. And, and in effect, you're selling because hopefully they're going to continue using your services. Hopefully they're going to continue having you around, uh, you know, through your recommendations. So it's very, it, it's vital. I mean, if, you, if you're not constantly selling, if you're not constantly recommending, as a consultant, you're going to find yourself out of work. Even self-employed consultants are going to find themselves out of work, especially uh, especially self-employed uh, consultants. Because if you're if you're working for a company as a consultant, 
and they're and they're tasking you with various customers it, it, sometimes they have a sales force that is selling those engagements so you're able to do other things but as a self-employed consultant if you're not selling if you're not making recommendations you will very soon find yourself unhappy poor and wondering what do i do next right um as such uh, through the selling, you're also looked at as the hero because as you make these recommendations, if they pan out the way that you think they will, and if the customer's needs are satisfied, then you're the hero, right? And that goes back to some of the earlier things we said about, you know, having fame from knowing a lot more people and, and being thought of as the expert. Oftentimes, this item, number three, is usually thought of less a, less along the lines of selling and more along the lines of being proactive, right? You're being proactive. You're recommending things, hopefully, before the problems come up. And, and that's, uh, that, that's part of that. Another item to consider as a consultant, and I consider this as a positive, is the travel, right? I, I Now, I realize in the previous video, travel was a negative that I included in there, but it can also be thought of as a positive if you take advantage of it. Oftentimes, as we travel around as consultants, as developers, uh, when we go to conferences, we, we tend to basically travel somewhere, get the job done really quickly, and get out. However, if you take advantage of it, uh, you can really do some extra sightseeing. You can spend an extra day somewhere and go see some of the local attractions. Uh, often when I go to a, a certain area, I will usually go to meetup.com, find out if there's a user group in the area and reach out to them and let them know that I'm going to be in the area and would like, would they like to do a meetup? Maybe I can show up and speak about something. Uh, because of course I do like speaking. I like mentoring. I like teaching. So I often reach out to the, the user groups and say, Hey, would you like me to stop by while I'm in the area? Um, and, you know, this is also uh, along the lines of travel, uh, you know, we're, you're going to be traveling as a consultant. If you're not traveling as a consultant, chances are you're not going to be doing really well. Uh, people don't come to you typically uh, on an ongoing basis. You need to create not only not only do you need to go to them to help fulfill the needs. And this isn't always the case. I work I work remote and I travel about half the time. So half of my year is spent traveling, half of my year is spent in my office working on something here, you know, from my office. Uh, now that that being said, just because I spend half my year traveling, that doesn't mean I'm traveling the entire time. For for instance, I travel 26 weeks out of the year. That doesn't mean I'm traveling for the entire week. It might mean I'm flying out on Monday and flying back home on Wednesday. So I consider that a week when I did travel, but it doesn't mean I was traveling for the entire week. And so, so that's kind of goes hand in hand with that. So there is a fair amount of travel with consulting um, because you have to go on site in some cases to get the credentials that you need to get on their network, get your VPN set up, things like that. And, maybe, and, and you also want to be uh, building relationships through this entire thing. Again, those relationships are what bring future engagements with the customers. So as a consultant, it's very important to build those relationships. Uh, along with the travel and along with all that comes kind of flexible schedules, right? We pretty much uh, make our own hours. Now that doesn't mean that we, that, but doesn't mean that we don't work. It means that our hours are very flexible, right? If you need to go on a personal uh, appointment in the morning and work in the afternoon, you can do that. If you want to work in the evening, if you want to work at 1 a.m., you can do that. Now, sometimes with consulting, you do have to interact with the customer. You do have to interact with their developers. So sometimes you can't necessarily get away with that. You do need to be there during business hours or whenever their developers are actually on the clock. But uh, for the most part, you can pretty much make your own schedule and, and work accordingly to that. And that's, so that's the, one of the number one things that, uh, that I like about consulting is doing that. Now, as in the previous video, there are a number of things that are kind of different if you're self-employed versus employed by somebody. Currently, I'm employed by, uh, by a company and I do consulting through them. Previous to that, I did consulting on my own as kind of freelance. Um, and so, so I kind of have some, some insight into that too. So, and, and I've also reached out to 
friends of mine who are freelance consultants and uh, I've got some things to go along with that as in the previous video. First off, there's no dress code, right? Uh, one of the bonus items of being self-employed is you don't have to worry too much about a dress code. Now, it, working as a consultant, if I'm working from home, of course, I don't have to dress up. Um, I do tend to dress semi-professionally. I mean, I, I sometimes I wear t-shirts, sometimes I wear a polo, I usually wear some sort of dockers, some days I wear shorts. I live in South Florida, so it tends to be warm. I can get away with shorts pretty much all year round. Uh, but uh, when I'm uh, when I'm traveling or when I'm in front of folks, then you you tend to dress a little bit more professional, right? You need to per, you need to personify the image of professionalism. But otherwise, it's a pretty open dress code, especially if you're self-employed. You can get away with it a little bit more. Uh, as a second item, you have unlimited earning potential as a self-employed consultant. Now you also have unlimited failure as far as finances go too. But the thing is, is if you want to raise, if you want to make more money as a consultant, you just need to get out there and sell more. You need to go and get more companies who want you to consult with them. You can take on as much or as little as you want to. Your, your uh, bank account is going to suffer the consequences or reap the benefits of that uh, however you decide to run it. Um, but unlimited earning earning potential is is one of the things that uh, is good about being a freelance consultant is you can make more or you can uh, settle for less. Another item is that there's no limit to the amount of sick days or vacation days. Now, again, the same with finances, you're limited, right? If you if you want to take more sick time or if you want to take more vacation as a freelance, you're you're able to do that. However, your bank account's going to suffer. If you're not doing any work, you're not generating income, and you can only do that for a certain time period before it starts to hurt you. But as a self-employed consultant, you do have that freedom to choose that. Uh, and another item, of course, is flexible location. I can work from wherever I want to. If I want to walk across the street, I actually have a Starbucks right across the street from where I live. I can go work out of Starbucks. If I want to work out of my office here, if I wanted to, to have some sort of co-location or rent an office, I could, I could do that. Um, so it's very flexible, especially as a freelance, right? Especially as somebody not working out of an office, it's, it's a lot easier to choose the, the flexibility of where you want to work from. Uh, also, as a self-employed consultant, you have a great amount of freedom. You have the power to say no. If you see that an engagement is not going to be good for you, or if you see that a customer is not going to be good, you have the freedom to say no. Uh, as uh, typically working for a company, you get to say no a lot less because the company is going to sell the engagement and then they need, they need you as, the, as the, uh, the, the hourly or the hired consultant to, to satisfy that. But as a freelance, you have the ability to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take that. It doesn't seem like something that's going to be an advantage to me. Um, if you see a company definitely setting themselves up for failure, you can just walk away from it and say, sorry, I'm not going to take that. Uh, of course, you then would have to go sell something more in order to be able to pay your bills. But you do have the freedom to say no. And, and all that kind of goes hand in hand with one of the myths. Uh, I didn't put it in here as a bullet item, but one of the myths of consultant is that there's higher income. And while that may be true, if you're able to take on more work, it's generally a myth. Typically, consultants make the same as developers, maybe a little bit more, depending on the amount of work you can take on. But most of the developers that I'm friends with, their salaries are very comparable to mine. I'm not making more by being a, being a consultant. I'm not making less by being a, a consultant. It's pretty much neck and neck. Uh, I'm, I, you know, as a, as, as a consultant, as a good consultant, you will tend to make about as much as a senior level developer. Uh, because in order to be a good consultant, you really have to be a senior level developer. You're constantly learning new things. You're expected to know more and, and so forth. So there you have it. That's my list of things and, and reasons why you might want to start a consulting business or be a consultant. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up down below, uh, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Uh, we've really grown here at BeachCast. I'm really enjoying people 
uh, benefiting from the videos. So if you found this useful, please tell others, please share it out on social media so people find us. And I appreciate it. Thank you.